Hello, my name is Sip Mendes. Welcome to Sip's Wood Chips. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching the videos and especially those that have subscribed. It's always great to have more subscribers. Here it is March 2016 and I now have about uh, 7,600 subscribers, which is, you know, amazing to me. And um, I want to thank everybody that makes comments also. I always uh, appreciate getting uh, your ideas and uh, your insight in, into the things I do. Uh, remember these are videos of how I made a particular project. It's not always the safest way, not often the best way, but it's the way I did it. So, okay, so uh, before you start any project make sure you read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with your power tools and equipment. Woodworking is fun, but it's important to work safely. So I'm gonna do a bowl and this is some mesquite that I've had laying around the shop for uh, maybe a couple of years now. I should have put a date on it, I didn't. And uh, it's not going to be a natural edge bowl because as you can tell the bark is already coming off. Okay, It's had a lot of insect damage and so the bark is actually quite loose. This, this piece was about twice as long and I went ahead and cut it into two pieces using my chainsaw. And I've done a little bit of upfront work here. I went ahead and, and cut off the corners so to make the, the turning a little bit easier. And I've marked the center. And my center is actually about a half an inch off center. And that's because this part was never sealed. And so it's got some small checks in it. And so I want to get rid of that and uh, this end is freshly cut and it looks pretty good. Okay. Usually I do some preliminary uh, drawings and sketches and, and uh, before I start, but this is going to be a freestyle bowl. And um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and get it ready, mount it on the lathe and start spinning it and we'll let the wood tell us and show us what's inside. So keep watching and we'll get started. I'm going to turn my lathe down as low as it goes. Looks like there's a good indention there already. Maybe as a wormhole or an ant hole. Pretty good. Okay, I'm going to take off my ring. Get that off. And uh, get my uh, shield ready. With, I'm going to start off with a one inch round nose just to get it started and then I'll progress to my um, um, bowl gouge and spin it at 275 RPM. Actually, that feels pretty good. So I'm actually hitting both in, both sides already. Okay, so that's spinning 300 RPM. Try a half-inch bowl gout and see how, how see how that does. I'm going back to the um, round nose. I feel a lot more secure with that.
And I'll try to speed it up a little bit. That's 345. It's got a little bit of out of balance. Not bad. I think those pops I here are, are uh, breaking wood breaking off rather than being cut off. So I gave it a quick sharpening just to go over it very lightly, just to get some teeth in it. It's 375 RPM. I'm going to start working on these corners a little bit more. Start getting it down to where it should be. I can probably do more, more good getting rid of this big lump here. It's looking better. Out of tear out, even out of the center. But then again, this was exposed to the elements. And I'm already coming up on this one. Less out of balance than it was. Okay. It's slow going, so I'm going to turn offline for a little while and see what I can get done. Turning offline, got this pretty well close, it's getting good, it's getting a lot better. I'm cutting on both ends now so that extra uh, off-centered area I have is gone. Getting rid of some of these high spots here, that'll help bring it into balance.
So that has helped tremendously. Because now this most of this high part here is gone. This is how much I got done on that first turning. It's been sitting here overnight, and so it's a good time to inspect it and get a good closer look at it. And my biggest concern is this area here, and on the other side similarly. As you can tell, I think you can tell pretty easy, that um, it has some big openings in the center, some big uh, checks, and I think it's okay. I don't think it's going to do anything, crack or break. It's very hard wood. I think just the outer rings could hold it together if they had to. As I remove weight on the inside, it should be fine. But what I do want to do is um, take some uh, thin CA glue and fill some of the cracks just to, as a little extra precaution. Because as I get down, I want to, I don't want to have to fill this. I want it to be real wood. And so I'll just put a little CA in there. What I also want to do is give it a coat of um, sanding sealer. I like using this uh, sanding sealer in particular. It's lacquer based. It dries very quickly. So if you decide to use lacquer based sanding sealer, it's always important to stir it. Because there's a there is some uh, uh, silica that's in it that soaks to, that uh, sinks to the bottom and that's what helps fill the grain. So you want to stir that up occasionally. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a, a coat here. I'm going to try to fill. Well, I'm going to try to get enough in there to soak deep into the these cracks here. These checks. And that will help uh, keep it together. It, I'm going to remove most of this anyhow. And as I uh, work on it and, and get deeper, we'll, we'll see. It also is good on the open grain like this, this end grain. This is um, sapwood in here. And it's kind of pithy, so it, if you decide to include it in, in, your, in your bowl, then it's good to, to fill the, the grain. And um, it's more of a precaution. And I want to see if as I turn and get it deeper, maybe it will uh, uh, not tear out as much. There's uh, quite a bit of tear out in these areas right now. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry and harden for a while. Probably leave it at least an hour or so. Also, one more reminder is uh, whenever you do use uh, lacquer-based products, make sure you have good ventilation. You don't want these fumes to build up and you don't you want to minimize your exposure to them and dry so that's been well over an hour ago and that CA should have cured by now also I'm gonna go ahead and start with a this they call this a half inch I think this is a half inch uh, uh, Thompson uh, bowl gouge and um, start with that and um, I'm gonna pull across this way some pulling cuts and I'm spinning 500 RPMs. Let's go up a little bit to 525. I'm getting a little bit of vibration out of it. Not so bad.
Well, that felt pretty good. So, and like I was mentioning earlier, it's okay to leave a little bit of uh, sapwood in there. It gives it some a contrast in color. The shavings coming off are real hot. <laughs> well, this looks a little better. See how it's not flaking off as much as it was before. I have my um, caliper set to 53 millimeters, and I'm gonna start this up, and I'm gonna draw a line where my um, I'm only. Where, where my recess is going to be. I'm going to touch only one side and make a small scribe, scribe a small line, and then match it to the other side. And that looks pretty good right there. Okay. And then I'll darken it with a pencil. I'm going to use a 1 8 uh, parting tool to get in there. So I'm not going to cut the um, actual dovetail into it just now. What I'm going to do is clean this out and then I'm going to make my uh, foot for my uh, bowl. And then when I'm all set up then I'll go ahead and uh, cut the dovetail. Angled, angled cut. I'm going to use a half inch round nose to shape the foot. And I'm still spinning 500 RPM. Then using my skew chisel, I'll cut the dovetail. Sometimes I have to remount my bolts, it's just usually to clean up the, the foot and get rid of uh, the dovetail. So I'm going to go ahead and use it, my skew here and uh, shape this, uh, this little nub here. That's all it takes. I have my bowl reversed now and uh, I can start hollowing some of this and I'll go ahead and start that with my uh, bowl gouge. As far as the wood telling me what to do, it looks like the bowl, the sides aren't going to go straight up, but they're going to curve around and follow this curve. So it looks like I should um, start rounding this over. Okay, and I am spinning at 575 RPM.
and I'm really concerned about how open this this hole is here so I'm gonna try to mix up a little bit of epoxy and I want to tint it with uh, some of the um, shavings I've got some really fine um, sawdust basically here and I'm gonna strain it and try to get only the the best of it through here I don't need very much that should be plenty right there and I'm going to use my little swizzle sticks that I got from Starbucks which are great for this kind of operation so I'm going to take some of the uh, sawdust here and mix it in to make it opaque and I don't want to mix too much in there I want to color it but I don't want it to thicken excessively Sometimes I mix a little black in with it, but uh, we'll try this. And if I shave it away, I shave it away. I'm going to stuff the holes there here. And this little stick is really good because it's thin enough to get right down in there and fill those inner spaces. I want to get this whole cr all these cracks filled. And like I said, I'll probably shave it away as I shape it, but I can do it again. And in the meantime, it'll make me feel a little bit better about it. Well, this has had time to cure and harden overnight, and so I'm going to go over it with a uh, one inch round nose and just to see what it looks like. And I'm spinning at 500 RPM. doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and shape it a little bit later and and I'm not I'm rather pleased with the shape it is. I'm, that's kind of unusual for me. Maybe I'll um, make this into a bead and make it look more like a clay pot and uh, that looks like what it wants to be and I have some holes here This look like they're part from uh, ant tunnels and wormhole going through there and so I'm going to take it down about an eighth of an inch, well, probably less than an eighth of an inch, to get rid of those because I don't want those in there. And I want it to taper a little bit more. And this part here I want it to round, out, round over and I'm going to put a bead out here. Like I'm hitting some soft wood in here and it's really grabbing it. Maybe it's where I was separating the the last of the, the uh, oh, what do they call that? Sapwood. Okay. So I've got a little bit more of a taper now down in this area because I wanted to taper down that way. I wanted to have a bulge a little bit higher than this yet. This seems a little high to me still. 
but uh, the diameter down here is pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and start shaping the, uh, the foot. Let me get in here with a um, skew chisel. And I'm going to make a large bead compared to my usual kind of beads. Still spinning at uh, 580 RPM. I'm ready to start hollowing and still spinning at 580 RPMs. Just a little bit high of center. This is actually where I'm crossing through the center of these broken pieces here. That's actually the same star area up here. It's got the little cracks in it.
it's actually getting hot. <laughs> so maybe I'll take a look at it and take a break. I'm going to continue on with the Halloween. Still using my 3 8 uh, bowl gouge. And still spinning at um, 480. I'll move it up to 600. See what we can do with the carbide tip. Well, I have not used this very much, but let's see how, how it does. And usually it's pretty uh, tame. It's not very grabby. I went ahead and put some epoxy in here to fill up these uh, cracks and things from the inside. They were pretty deep. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and spin it and uh, clean that out. Still spinning at uh, 580. pretty good. It's uh, still about less than a half inch thick. So I'll probably do the epoxy one more time. That's about it for today. And I think I've got it as hollowed as best I can. The walls are a little bit thick, but for the size pot, I it should be a fine. I'm gonna just start sanding and I'll do that offline. And that may take a, a while. <laughs> And here's my bow. I've done quite a bit of sanding on it. I sanded it with 120, 150, 220, and uh, 320 sandpaper. And I've gone over it with a little bit of steel wool. And I've also uh, given it about two coats of uh, polyurethane. And I mostly sanded it and, and buffed most of that off. And then went over it with the steel wool. And now I'm going to start applying uh, paste wax with a little bit of mineral oil. And we'll see what that looks like. Because I want what I want is a, a soft finish, not a lot, not a high gloss. And um, the steel wool 
busted the uh, gloss off it so now maybe a little bit of um, paste wax will bring it back and bring back the color to the actual finish here and then I'll probably go over it with the, and buff it. I want to be able to uh, feel the wood the, underneath once it's finished. I don't want a thick uh, surface film on it of uh, varnish. Well, I'm going to let that set for about uh, 15 or 20 minutes and then I'll buff it with just a piece of cloth. About 10 minutes now and I'm going to start buffing that off. And I'm using uh, some of the same cloth I used to, to apply the wax. It was uh, about uh, 91 today and so I put the um, this vessel <laughs> out in the sun um, for about three or four hours and I think that really helps because it hardens up that the polyurethane cures and seals everything up really well and gets rid of all of the excessive uh, uh, what they call aromatics those are the petroleum distillates and things that evaporate and that little bit of heat well that helps it evaporate even quicker and gets it out of from way down in the wood so I'll let that uh, set overnight and I think I'm done I'm gonna I'll probably uh, flip it around and uh, spin it and get rid of the dovetail on the on the bottom but I've got other videos that you can watch on on how to do that if I would have done it again, this little piece here, I filled with uh, epoxy and sawdust. Should have used uh, charcoal or ground activated charcoal and epoxy would have, black would have been better. So if you've enjoyed this video, click on like. If you're not a member of YouTube, uh, sign up for an account. It's quick and easy. You can leave comments, ask questions, get answers. So until next time, take care.